You're listening to episode 20 of the Fearless English podcast. Welcome to the Fearless English podcast, where it's all about helping you confidently communicate with anyone without compromising who you are. Let's get started, Fearless Learner. Well, hello there, and welcome to this week's episode where I'm going to be talking to you about the input hypothesis proposed by Stephen Creshen, who has a PhD in linguistics. He is an author of more than 250 articles about language acquisition. acquisition sorry. Creshen has six hypotheses, which I'm not going to go into all of these hypotheses. I'm only going to be talking about one hypothesis, which is, it sounds really boring, but I'm I'm going to try and make it a little bit more fun so you, and simpler so you can understand it a lot more. So what does hypothesis mean? Um, so hypothesis means when somebody creates or thinks about something, um, so it's an explanation, really, that somebody comes up with and they're based on limited evidence. So there's not a lot of evidence, but many, many teachers and educators have tried this method in the classroom, including myself, inside the Female Language Academy. And I was able to really um, get some good results using this method. So if you're a student listening, I'm going to help you start to implement this in your own little mini lessons or big lessons or full lessons. And if you're a teacher, it can help you understand the hypothesis a little bit more. So what is the hypothesis? It's basically the input hypothesis. If you want to research it a little bit more, you can on Google. So what is it? So there's two different forms of the input hypothesis. So you have one way, which is listening, and the other way, it's um, reading. So reading, listening, two ways to obtain language. And why is input so important? It allows us to see language in context. It allows us to see language, you know, used in, you know, different scenarios. So it's so, so important for students to really understand that without this part of language, it, you can't just go into a classroom and the teacher says, let's talk about restaurants. And you do that, you know, it, it doesn't help you in la language development, especially if you're starting um, new topics, or even if it is old topics, like it doesn't help you acquire new chunks of language. Um, it probably will if you do listen to someone else talking about the same content. So say a student has a little bit more vocabulary in that area and they start talking about it, this is also considered to be input. So the first thing you need to do is start to do your research around input. So you're looking for videos and you're looking for reading material. Now, in the past, I used to really focus a lot on only listening material, so videos, podcasts, and so on. But over time, I realized that with natural, you know, natural um, videos, authentic videos, I should say, it doesn't have a lot of um, juicy grammar um, specific language features within the video. So what I've done is to compensate that with reading material. So what I do now is allow my students to, you know, have YouTube videos that they watch, obviously authentic, which means that it's not created for language learners, it's specific to um, anyone can watch it. So it's not created, the language hasn't been changed in any way to simplify. It. So it's just a natural way of speaking. Um, and then what I do is I look for YouTube videos, podcasts. Um, I um, even sometimes um, I would recommend you using Instagram um, where teachers are speaking to each other or different areas, industries, speaking on um, Instagram live. That's a really good way 
to start. And then um, other students, like I said before, and also reading books in that topic. Now, what do I mean in that topic? So the first thing before you do start to do your research, you really need to think about what the topic is that you want to focus on, what grammar point you want to focus on, what, like how, what do you want to be able to do after this period of like either the lesson or, you know, the week after the month, what do you want to be able to do? Then working backwards, finding videos related to that topic. Say you want to talk um, about restaurants and food. So then that's what you do. You go and you find out how do I, um, you know, find videos related to that topic? How do I find cookbooks or how do I find, how do I go to a restaurant and talk to a waiter to get some input? Um, so the idea is to get as much input as possible. The more you can get the, like different types of input, the better it is for you. Then once you've done that, what I want you to do as a student is to start to notice different types of phrases related to the topic that you are learning. So phrases that, in this case, if we say we're doing restaurant, you know, phrases related to the food, maybe the cutlery, the tablecloth, whatever it is, you're writing it down and you're starting to make notes. Now, if you don't know how to make notes, I've created a podcast um, talking about this. So make sure you go a few episodes back to learn about how to make notes and what the difference between making and taking notes is. So now that you have, you know, found all your different videos and articles and you put it into one document, that's when you start to absorb the language. Um, your main aim should, should be to just understand the message that's being sent to you. Um, that's and that's why I think it's important when you are looking for specific videos um, or articles or whatever, that you do understand a big chunk of the piece of content or like the video, the article, the podcast, that you understand at least 80% of what is being said. And what I mean by understand is not understand every single word, is that you understand the message the person is trying to deliver to you, most of it anyway, because then you'll be able to understand the message and be able to notice any specific grammar structures that you want to focus on. Say that you really, you're like, okay, this month I'm going to f focus on prepositions because I am terrible with prepositions what I'm going to do is focus on prepositions and so you listen to all the different ways the the speaker is using prepositions or you look at the article and you highlight all the different prepositions and you look at the words next to it and words after and so on right so I guess like this is probably the end of like what I want to say today. So to sum up, I want you to think of the end in mind, choose a topic, then work backwards. Start to find materials that can help you that are, you know, easy enough for you to understand and still challenging in terms of language, um, new language that is being used. So 70-30, I would say. Um, and yeah, try to find as much content around the topic as possible. And then once you're, you've done that, what you're going to do is focus on the output, which is you're going to be focusing on how do I go from speaking to now using the language. And this is some of the things that we learn inside the Female Language Academy. And it's I do that all for my students because I do... If, understand how important it is to do the input and the output and the noticing and the practicing so there's lots of different elements and over the next few weeks I will be talking about the different elements but for today I just want you to think about the input and until next week I shall love you and leave you okay guys I hope you enjoyed this lesson if you have, please make sure you share it with your friends so that they can thank you and they can like 
learn something new and thank you for it. All right, take care and I'll see you next week. Bye. If you enjoyed today's lesson, then you'll love our speaking club where we take what we learn in these lessons and put it into action. You'll get to meet other women and practice speaking English every week for an hour. All you have to do is go to www.blackboardenglish.com forward slash cup. I'll say that again, www.blackboardenglish.com forward slash cup. Let's work together to help you become a confident English speaker. See you in class.